To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To get somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright What ideas out there? Be considerate Some people call my wife and say and they rough up my secretary, my assistant. They have no idea she's my appraiser, she's my underwriter, she's my right arm. It's a terrible mistake not to be considerate of subordinates, clerks, handymen, people you, you meet along the way because you just never know. You never, never know. Clean, clean up. A little thing like at four o'clock, have your contractor sweep the floor and pick up the nails and get the junk off the floor because you can show that house. People will come after work to see it, but it's got to look nice. Don't just wait for that weekend customer. Keep your house nice and clean at the end of the day and you can, you can show it and sell it before it's finished. You know, the secret to building is get in and get out before your soft costs eat you up a lot. Before your taxes, insurance, interest, water, sewer, heat, electric, snow removal, all the little things eat you up a lot. Get in and get out. Speed is very important. I tell my people when they come to settlement, if you're smart, you will put a sign out that day. And by the way, communicate. The average sign that goes up on a house says uh, Keller Williams, uh, Long and Foster. Spend a hundred bucks and get a sign that says, beautiful rehab house, four bedrooms, three baths, nice appliances. Tell the story out there. And if not a story, get a box on a stand and put it in the lawn and put a paper in it that tells the story. Uh, don't be afraid to spend a few bucks and communicate what you're doing. There's tons more. But I've got to let Mitch speak. We're talking more about financing? Yeah. What do you want to know about financing? Tell me, tell me about we'll take some questions. Ask me questions. Everybody knows everything? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> well, what makes you, what hey, makes you, Phil's got a question. Phil yeah. <coughs> knows you, everything. I beat you to it. Don't try to steal my question. I'd like to hear about some of the more successful real estate deals that you've done in your life, the ones you're most proud of. How'd you do them? How'd you fund them? That's the kind of stuff that gets me excited. I owned the building at 1521 Walnut Street. That's sure to love that thing. Nice piece of real estate? Yeah. I'll tell you why I bought it. In those days, I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it was right between the Magic Band, the Beck Finn, and across the street with his Arthur's. The three most swinging bars that we had in the 1500 block along the street. Okay. This building's for me. I got a PIDC loan. I was the first lawyer to ever get a PIDC loan. What is that? PIDC. Philadelphia yeah. Industrial Development Corporation. I think they loaned me the money at about 4% for right. 20 years when, when the rates, and by the way, look into civil programs. There's tremendous programs out there uh, in the city. Uh, I got a PIDC loan at 4%. <laughs> and what I did, it was a two, Stories, don't do two and a half stories. And I said to my uh, maintenance man one day, listen, here's what I want you to do. Go up on the roof and Saturday, get a whole lot of uh, cinder block. Put the cinder block all around the roof. And uh, if anybody comes, a cop or somebody from L and I, tell them that Mr. Banks likes to sunbathe. He wants to go up on the roof and he wants to have a little privacy. He went up and put the cinder block around. I said, the next Saturday, here's what I want you to do. Get a roofer and put a roof on. And if anybody 
he says to me, what are you doing? <coughs> Tell him, Mr. Banks wants to store a bunch of files up here. You can't let him get wet. He's got to put a roof up here on top of the cinder block. You know, not put the roof on. I built six offices <laughs> under that roof, rented them all out. Sold the building, I paid about 200 grand for it and sold it for a million dollars. That was my best deal. It's a nice deal. I don't suggest you do that. I was <laughs> <laughs> young and foolish and I had guts, I had courage. It wasn't, it wasn't courage, it was chutzpah. That's what it was. Uh, and there's a difference between courage and chutzpah and, and doing the, the right thing. I really do not. Advise that, but you wanted to know what my best deal was. That was it. Nice deal. <laughs> Questions? What makes you a better lender than anybody else? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not humble, but a nice guy. I like to help, I like to help people. You like to help people. I mean, that's why I'm in partners. Uh, I'm not a pig. The rates are, are reasonable. Uh, let me tell you something about the cost of money. <coughs> cost of money? Anybody know what the most expensive <coughs> cost of money is? Getting married. No. <laughs> That's good. Free information. Second most. Twice. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> you hear about third and fourth? <coughs> my wife, it's a hobby. My, 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 I'm all my second wife, and she's 20 years, 18 years younger than me. And, and when I went to tell the kids I'm, I'm getting engaged, they for 18 years, he's nuts. And they sent me to the family, the family doctor, and he was supposed to be talking me out. He said to me, Bart, you know, a honeymoon is a very strong disappear. I said, if she dies, she dies. <laughs> <laughs> you got a trip or what? The most expensive cost of money. Not having. A lady who calls herself a, a real estate agent, who has been serving in public since late 2014, December 2014, and now has a license, walks three people through that house, okay? 6%, $6,000 she gets for filling out the forms and showing up at settlement to get her check. At the settlement, by the way, she's pitching the new buyer. And, uh, she gets six grand, but don't give Bart, who finances the whole deal, 100%, $8,000 or $7,000. Now, you could make $40,000 flipping that house. You want to do that <coughs> only to the banker, because the banker is only going to charge you a half percent a month. So you're going to save $4,000 of my, my interest, OK? Here's what happens when you go to the bank. He's going to say to you, I want to see your financial statement. You get a financial statement. Two weeks later, he calls you and he says, uh, I need your tax return. So you give me your tax return. Two weeks later, you call him and say, how's my loan doing? He says, oh, I need the bank statements for the last six months. You get him the bank statements for the last six months. Call him in two weeks, how's my loan doing? He said, I need to get an appraisal. Sends out an appraisal. Two weeks later, and this goes on for 12 weeks, you had uh, an agreement of sale where settlement was due in 30 days. You lost your piece. You lost $40,000 because you didn't want to pay an extra three or $4,000. And by the way, at the end of the 12 weeks, you know what he says to me? He said, that house is empty. There's no one in it. There's no tenant. There's no cash flow. We can't finance that. You told them the first day you were an investor and you were buying a shell. But he's a bank employee. If you were any smarter, he wouldn't be a loan officer at your branch bank. <laughs> and he tell oh, him, his big C is it's got to go to committee. Committee. That, that could be a month, because committee only meets every so often. So, you know, think about our money. It's, it's really a good deal. Yes, sir. You said you need collateral. What percentage of you need uh, for? We will go, if your credit is good and you have a little experience, we will go 100% loan to that. OK? 
Okay. Okay. I'm alive. That sounds great to me. You know, you'll too if you get yeah. the right collateral and the right guy. If you have the same customer who's been back and forth <coughs> six, eight times, I can go on and do You'll go on and do that. You know, you know, you know the money's cut my credit and I don't have experience. No, I won't even do that. <laughs> your credit's not good? No, I said my credit is good, good. And, I, and I don't have experience. I'll hold your hand. I'll hold your hand through the deal, but you have to listen to me. Yeah, don't know it all. It's what I learned after I knew it all to help me most in this business. Yes, sir. Do you have a standard uh, credit score minimum? I'd like to see at least a 625. So you're version 8 or version 5? Pardon me? Version 8 or version 5? I don't know. My, my assistant on the right side of the show. makes a big difference. Okay. Oh, is it? I'm talking about a fight on school. That's what we're talking about. There's version eight. You get three scores, you get an average. There's version eight fight on score, there's version five fight on score. And you're used to different purposes. I there's only about 100 points difference between the two. Okay. Let me say this to you. I also want to see your credit report and see that you pay everybody. You're not overloaded with debt. I want to know who you are and tell me about yourself. I like, you know, I like to get, I like to get kissed before I go to bed with you. I like to know a little something about you. It's not going to happen on the first day. Yes, sir. Do you lend uh, strictly for flips or uh, buy and holds? Flips, buy and hold. Here's the deal. If you're flipping, we'll give you a six month or a year run, depending on how long the job you think it's going to take. If you're going to rent it, I want you to finish it quickly, rent it, go get a conventional loan. That's why credit is so important, by the way. Because when you're done with me, you gotta go to a bank or a savings and loan, and we'll take you to them because we know who the lenders are. And you gotta bail me out. You don't wanna pay my rates for years. My rates are terrific for six months or a year. We're the sine qua non. Without us, there's no deal. But then you wanna go out and get a big boy's loan. You know? And get us in. But we can for the intent. Um, I have a question for you. If you were going to start your business today from scratch, would you start buying rentals and uh, refining out, or would you start with flipping houses? Excellent question. My last chapter here is find them. There's a chapter on find them, finance them, fix them, flip them. But the last chapter is finish rich. And Mitch is going to tell you yeah. all about that. If you, if you <coughs> buy four I thought I was going to tell him about it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's interesting. laughs> but if you can buy four or five deals in a year, like he did over 17, 20 years or more, and you wake up someday with 80 properties and they pay the mortgages off, and during the time they have them, cash flow coming in every month, uh, you wind up with eight, ten million dollars worth of real estate at uh, a very young age. I see you're not an older fella. And you will be very happy you had the patience to rent and hold on to them and service them and, and be in that business. Uh, if I were starting out today and I would buy and rent, I would not flip or wholesale or at least purchase or Answer your question. Uh, yes. <coughs> Do you finance new construction as well? You got to be good. <laughs> new construction is a, is a whole different world. Yeah. You got foundations. You got unions. You got L and I. <laughs> yes, we do. Well, that comes to and 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 the geographic area. Will you go to New Jersey as well, or only no, Pennsylvania? We will not. I will not do Jersey. Is there legal or? Is it I'm a lawyer. I know what it takes to get a house back in New Jersey. You're yeah. looking at oh, two, crazy. two and a half years. Yeah. What? And yeah. then, yeah. Well, yeah. <coughs> Philadelphia is bad enough, but the, I, I do not want to go to Jersey. Are you strictly the, more, the farther away you get from our office, the better the deal has to look. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're within 20, 25 miles and something goes wrong, we get in our car, we know the players, I get a contractor, I know a lawyer. 
you get me up and somebody asked me today about the Poconos. <laughs> I've been up there and uh, one lawyer calls the other one and says, Charlie, are you going to put that lady out of her house? You know she ain't well. She only needs another six, eight months. <clears throat> I'll see you down at the Bucks meeting and we'll talk about it. <coughs> and, and the contractors up there, they know you're only up there for one deal. You're not going to be a regular customer. And when they see big city customer up there, double. Oh. Your prices are double. I don't want to be far from home. What is your range? Again, it depends on the deal. I've done deals in Florida. Because I have yeah, a home down there. I might go inspect them myself. But uh, it, it depends. You know, you bring me in a deal, you put up 50% of the money, I'll go pretty far. But if you want 100% loan to value financing, you better be close to 20, 25 miles. <coughs> yes, sir. I don't know much of the real estate lingo or jargon, but what is I've heard rehabs a bunch. Can, can you explain rehabs? Rehabilitate a property. Okay. You buy it, it's distressed, yeah. you bought it yeah. cheap, and you're going to rehabilitate it. The entire thing, okay. It could be paint and paper. Uh, should have been a haircut, cosmetic job, or it could be major. Roof, plumbing, electric, floors, walls. Depends. I didn't know if it meant like a certain value or a certain number. I didn't no. Know. Okay. Mm. Although I, I will say this I'm not thrilled with financing expensive jobs on the main line, to be honest with you. Because of what I told you, there is no plan B. When it doesn't sell, all you can do is cut the price, cut the price, cut the price. You cannot rent it at a sufficient enough price. It's a, it's a real loser when it's a loser. Oh, uh, yeah, so you said uh, most of the contracts you deal with are good for two and a half jobs. Do you have a hint on project good contract? Above all, you're going to have a lot of luck. <laughs> if you don't have good luck, you're going to find another one. <laughs> That's why I'm in the finance business. I don't want to deal with contractors, city inspectors, uh, tenants. I don't want to do that. I don't want you to do it, not put the money in. You're young and strong, I can see that. I should let Mitch talk to you. No, thank you very much. One more question. Do you take kids as collateral? Do <laughs> <laughs> oh, I take what? Kids as collateral. Children. <laughs> What's the kids earning potential? <laughs> you think you have kids? Talk to me. That's somebody I don't know about. Come on. Thank you, Bart. Thank you.